to get enough room in here. Well, the waves are sort of there. And uh, the next step is to get some resistance into the canvas by putting this sandstone that these waves are pushing up against. Different than the sky, which is the tension is coming down this way and the waves are coming forward this way, these stones should offer solid resistance. So that's going to be an interesting challenge to be able to get them so that they feel like, not that they're moving towards the waves, but that they're actually um, placed and holding solid resistance. So um, that's my next step. So I think you can see where I'm going to be working. Uh, so I'm just going to start. Uh, I'm going to need to mix some of the colors here. I've got some lovely deep blue on my palette knife here. And I actually had to find a new one. It sort of um, does the trick, but it's not as nice as my um, painting knife that I had for over 40 years. Uh, I still miss it. So let's see what we've got here. Got this beautiful ochre yellow and a nice orange that actually has a transparency to it that I'm going to use. And this is called Earth Brown. It's a little lighter and warmer than a burnt umber. That's one thing about the water mixable paints. Not all the names are the same as, you know, traditional oil paints. So let's see what we've got here. I want to stay away from that blue because I want to use it later to go back into the sky. Hmm, it seems about right. Let's make one more darker color here. I'm not all that great at just mixing my colors and using the exact color on my canvas. I tend to do a lot of mixing right on the canvas as I go. So what I do is I get myself a good start and then I go from there. So that should do the trick. Let's see, neither of these brushes are going to work. I want to save them for later. Uh, I tend not to wash my brushes, but to have several that I can use. Well, so much for that. Upside down paint, paint brushes. But this will work. person always wants a little bit of interesting noise in their videos, don't you think? Oh well. That's what you get when you come to the studio with me. You get all the crashes and bangs as long as along with everything else. So I've wet this brush uh, before I do anything else. I have a bit of linseed oil here. Just a couple of drops. One thing I find is if um, is that the colors will tend to dry a bit flat without this, especially as I start working up to my final layers. So, not that, that we're there yet, but it's nice to not have the paint so thick that it's making uh, it hard to work with. Alright, as you can see, those were just ideas on the palette, not actual colors I wanted. Okay. So this um, sandstone has both light and dark areas just by nature. Um, they, uh, it's going to be interesting. So I'm just going to get the background kind of darks in place first. I have this history of having worked with watercolors for years and when I painted with watercolors, they say, oh, you can tell that you once painted with oils. And now that I paint in oils, people would say, oh, that has the feel of watercolor. So it's just that what happens is you learn to use all your techniques from both mediums when you've switched back and forth. Okay. The sandstone actually gets worn away over the years by the um, by the waves. Up oh, down on these knees, I still have my 
shift knee pads on. Makes it a lot easier to not hesitate to go down and get those waves and or rocks in place or waves in place, whatever I'm working on at the bottom of the canvas. I remember reading someplace that one time Monet dug a hole to drop his painting into so that he could reach the top of it. And uh, I haven't had to go that far yet. But when you're working on large canvases, you don't always have just the right angle and able to move around just exactly the way you would like, especially in a small home studio like I have here. It kind of always worked like this. It used to be I only had the kitchen table to work on and had to clear it away before I started dinner. Um, thank heavens we're not there anymore. Okay, so we're starting to get the feel of this. Mm, not very solid looking yet. So what I will need to do is go to my reference image and grab a smaller brush now and start making some more definite shapes in here. Um, of this painting, this is probably the area that will be most precise, um, giving the viewer something to uh, lock onto to be able to read the rest of the painting. So I don't think I'm going to keep you with me while I do this next piece, um, just because it's a little bit more fiddly. Um, but we'll come back a bit later and I'll maybe bring you back when I start working on the mountains and uh, going back up into the sky, sort of pulling everything together. When this painting is done, this piece will read as one section and this piece will read as the other. The danger is, is to have the mountains read with the water and have the attention on this horizon line rather than the water horizon line. And that would divide my painting in half. So that's not what I want. And so I'm conscious of that as I keep building the painting up. So we'll see what happens. We'll bring you back later.